A lot of people don't know why I did it. I did it because I had no money. I lost three jobs learning game. Because every time I'd go to work, I'd go to work, walk in, go out, game, come back, walk out. And apparently, people aren't happy about that. <laughs> and I thought it was a good cause, because I always make me chips, but they weren't happy. So I lost a lot of jobs. And the only thing I had was the ability to game, but I didn't have a name enough that you could make money teaching. So what I did was I was like, well, what I have are a lot of hot chicks. So I called up my clubs. So I was like, hey, I've got a lot of hot chicks. And they're like, oh, we'll pay you to bring them here. I was like, all right. So I would literally just go to a nightclub, and if I walked in the door, they would give me a fat check of 500 pounds just for walking in the door, because they knew that women would come if I went there. And that was it. They used to put my name on the flyer. Adam Lyons is going to be here. And girls would just turn up. It was ridiculous. That's what my game was like back then. Now, what you don't know is that as part of that, I was expecting to create a party ride. You don't just give someone 500 pounds, like you expect them to do something. So I was supposed to be like a host. I'd like be funny and entertaining and talk to people. And part of my thing is I'd give free drinks. I would have a bottle of vodka. At least that much vodka in that bottle. And the rest was fruit juice. But it looked like a bottle of vodka that was coloured. And I'd be like, oh, you're going to get wasted. Yeah. And these chicks, are, two of these, they'd be like, vodka gets to me. I'm like, that's funny, because there's a lot more vodka in that. But these women would be drunk like fun. Anything happened, they'd sober up real fast. Because they weren't drunk. They just wanted to act drunk. So they could justify all the shit they were going to be doing with me in the room, in the nightclub. Women need that justification. We all do. You all need it. We all need a justification. We spoke about how important it is earlier. They need a justification. They want to hand over their responsibility to someone. And one of the best ways of doing it is taking responsibility. Stanley Milgram once again found out that human beings would be willing to do some of the most atrocious acts ever if they could blame somebody else for forcing them to do it. Uh, I don't know if you guys know about the electric shock test he did. Some of you do, some of you don't. The idea is that he told a human being to electrocute somebody else. And there were radiating buttons. The first button was a mild shock. The last button killed them, right? And he found that he could get it up to like maybe 70 to 80% of people would commit murder just because somebody said, do it, I take full responsibility. Okay, but it's his fault. He told me to and he took responsibility. Yeah? That's how you can do it. That's why um, military officers can be so powerful because they're taking the responsibility. That's right, it's not your fault. It's taking responsibility. It's such a powerful tool. Women need you to take responsibility from them. And I have found a phrase that works in almost every single situation where you would possibly need to take responsibility. And I'm going to illustrate it by telling you about a girl I met. I met this chick. She's from Latvia. She's about six and a half foot tall when she's wearing six inch heels. Stunning blonde, big breasts, slim waist, beautiful girl. And I met her in a nightclub. I opened her, gamed her for a bit, got a make out, and I said, hey, let's meet out, let's meet up tomorrow. And she goes, no, I, I go out to Latvia tomorrow, I can't. I was like, oh, okay, no problem, we'll stay in touch. I tried to escalate and I couldn't, because I'd only been in the game about three or four months. A year later, I meet the same chick, in the same nightclub, on the same day, in the same situation. Because every year, she does a week-long holiday in London, and she does the nightclub circuit and you go to the same nightclubs on the same day. That's how the circuit went. So there she was, and I see her a year later. By now my game is drastically improved. So I go up to her, and I move in front to open her. Hey, blah, 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 blah. And she is so hot that she's decided to pretend that she doesn't know who I am. She goes like this, sorry, and walks away. And at that point, my game is good enough that I'm not going to take that kind of shit. So I went, don't even fucking try it. I met you last year. Smile at least. And so she smiles like, ah, oh, you got me, okay, you know me. So I get talking to her. After about a half hour, I game her again, we get another make out. I'm like, let's meet up tomorrow. This time, not because I couldn't have her that night, but because I had another girl that I was taking home that night. So I legitimately couldn't bring her home. She goes, no, I go back to Latvia tomorrow. Same situation again. But this time, I got a bit more experience. I'm like, you know what? I want to take you for the best coffee you've ever had. What time do you leave? She's like, I leave at this time in the afternoon. I'm like, great. Let's meet at noon. 
I know this beautiful coffee shop. It's about, oh, no, sorry, I know this place to get the best coffee. It's about two minutes away from the train station. Wording is very important. Um, and she goes, okay, no problem. Me. On the morning, the following day, write this down, it's very important. I said to her, hey, chick, just so you know, I'm in meetings all day and I'm going to be five minutes late. Is that okay? Why did I send that message? my game Arsenal. That one message. Because it's going to tell me if she's going to flake or not. Because if she's going to flake, she'll say, oh, you know what, I can't make today anyway, don't worry about it. That is my best way of assessing whether a girl's going to flake or not. That saves me so much time. So many times when I could have met up with a chick and she flaked on me, I'm like, fuck, if only I'd known, I'd be somewhere else. I'd be with another girl. Sending that message every morning to every girl you're supposed to have a day two with will help you out. She's like, no, nah, that's fine. So I know it's on. So I meet up with the girl. At the station, I make out with her. I make out with her because I know how fast I have to move. Because I have half an hour before she has to leave. I walk her down the road. We go around the corner and we enter a block of flats. She's like, what are we doing here? I was like, it's my house. And you guys may notice the theme with this. She says, I thought you were taking me for a coffee. I was like, we are. I made the best coffee you've ever had. We go inside. I put my music on. <laughs> See? Powerful. I go in the kitchen and I start shitting myself. A, I have no idea how to make a cup of coffee. <laughs> B, I don't have any coffee in my house. So I'm kind of freaking out, thinking what I can do. And I realize that actually it's not the big one juice thing. Because I don't want to make her a cup of coffee, I want to fuck her. So I turn the kettle on and start boiling water because I figure that's kind of part of the process and at least if I start with that, she'll think I'm making coffee. I go straight back out and I do what I do best. Stop making out with her, start dancing to the song, put my hand up her skirt and start escalating. Things start getting hot and heavy. I drag her into my bedroom. She goes, mate, where are we going? And I was like, into my bedroom, I want to show you the rest of my flat. She goes, I'm not going to sleep with you. When she says that, do you know what I know? One very important fact, she's going to sleep with you. A girl will only tell you she's not going to if she's already decided that she will and is hoping that she can resist it. That's the only time she says that. At least in that way. If she's like, fuck off, I'm not going to sleep with you. That's that empathy thing. you got to judge it. But the way she was saying it to me, I knew it was on. I go, don't worry about it, trust me. Everything will be okay. That is the lie. Don't worry about it, trust me. It'll be fine. Everything will be okay. I lie down on the bed, I start kissing her neck. She starts kissing me back and we're hardcore making out. I slip my hand in between her legs and I start trying to turn her on the outside of her clothing. She's definitely getting aroused. I put my thumb in the top of her uh, what was she wearing? Like denim shorts or whatever, I don't know what it was. Some kind of three-core length capri shit thing. I don't know. They were pink, whatever. So I start pulling them down. And she goes, no, 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 stop. Now, this is a very important thing. If a girl tells you to stop, you stop. There's actually posters in London that say, stop means stop. When a woman tells you no, it's time for you to go. <laughs> they're, they're, that's like there. So I was like, fuck, that poster told me I know what to do. <laughs> so I know I've got to change that, right? So I say to her, you know what? You're saying stop, but your body's telling me you're interested. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to count down from five. If at any point during that time you tell me to stop what I'm doing and you don't like it, I will stop. But all you have to do to let it happen is say nothing. Five. Four. She starts kissing me back. Three. She starts crying. Yeah, Two. She starts to pull her trousers down. Don't worry about it. It'll be fine. She's now just in her underwear. But I know it ain't on. Why ain't it on? Top's on. I start taking her top off.